My brother was accidentally shot in the head right beside the eye when he was five years old. He lived from then until he was 72 years old with 38 pieces of lead embedded in his brain that they couldn't get out. He was as normal as anybody else as long as he took one pill every day. Uh, he worked on the same job for 38 years, uh, Planton Morganton, retired from there. He had back surgery in Asheville, and that surgery left him a cripple. Then went back to the surgery to do another back surgery to try to correct that, and that made it even worse. So Larry had to live last few years of his life either on a walker or in a wheelchair or holding to something else in order to walk. That all changed. Monday morning, he made the choice. He said, I want to lay here like this knowing that I'm not going to get any better. Uh, he had two bouts of pneumonia and the pneumonia destroyed his lungs. Wasn't nothing they could do about it. The doctor said it's fatal. And uh, he said, I don't want to live like this. Told his wife, said, uh, the only thing I hate is leaving you. And she said, don't worry about me. I'll be all right. You go on home. See your mom and dad. All the rest of the family's up there. And he looked at her and he said, honey, that's shout crown, ain't it? That's what he's doing today. Oh, open your Bibles to the book of First Peter chapter 5. Pays to be ready, folks. No joking around with it. This is an eternal matter. Better be ready. Not just pretending. I'm talking about really ready to meet the Lord. Your time's coming as well as mine. and We don't know when it's going to be. Could be today, tomorrow. Could be an accident. Uh, they say sometimes that people die of natural cause. Ain't nothing natural about dying. <laughs> to me, there's not. But uh, we're going to leave this whole world one way or the other. Pays to be ready. You found 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. For a couple of days, the Lord's been dealing with my heart about this message. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about that means he's walking around in this world he walks by your house he walks by where you work he walks around our church sometimes he walks in our church he walks about the devil's not crippled and he's not dead he's very much alive Walking around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Several months ago, I was in Christian Supply Shop. I stopped by there every once in a while to see if they got a book or something that I don't have. And, and I noticed book title caught my attention. The title of the book was You Can Trust the Devil. 
And I thought, my goodness, a Christian bookstore selling a book that is entitled that you can trust the devil. Curiosity got the best of me. <laughs> and I pulled that book off of the shelf and it was written by Dr. Edward Schwartz. And here's basically what that book said. You can trust the devil to be what he's always been and to do what he's always done. That's basically what the whole book is about. He hadn't changed, folks. There's some things you can trust the devil with and about. Alive and well is that booger. I wish he wasn't. I wish God, God has already sentenced him, but I wish his sentence had already been carried out. But it's not. He'll be here until Jesus deals with him in the final judgment. That hadn't taken place yet and I don't know when it's going to take place. But I'm here to tell you that you can trust the devil. Let me tell you how. You can trust the devil to deceive your mind. That's how the devil began his work in the first place. When he was kicked out of heaven, he appeared to Adam and Eve as a serpent and told Eve that God didn't mean what he said when he said leave the fruit of this tree alone, but when you eat it, you're going to die. God didn't really mean that. He put every tree out here for you to eat, even this one. The devil tempted her. She took of the fruit, ate it, gave to her husband. He ate. And the devil became a great liar to the first people that ever walked the face of this earth. He deceived the mind of Eve into thinking that God didn't mean what he said. Now here is a whole book with over 700,000 words in it about God. God means every word of it. Amen. From the front to the back, God means every word of this Bible. But the devil has deceived and will deceive people into believing that what God said isn't true. And he'll work on their mind. Now you know what I'm talking about. There's not a person sitting in this building that the devil hadn't worked on their mind. I know of some that the devil works on their mind thinking that it's not wrong to drink a few beers or have a few sips of whiskey with friends or something like that. Uh, that's how the devil works. He deceives a person's mind and you can trust him to do so. He'll get you to thinking there ain't nobody like you. They'll like you down there at that church. He'll say to you, they won't miss you if you lay out or if you go somewhere else. That church down there, all they're interested in is your money and uh, your presence and that's all they care about. That's how the devil deceives your mind. And you can trust him to do that. I was in a church not long ago. I ain't going to tell you where it's at. But for some reason, the pastor got pretty depressed. And things wasn't going like he thought they ought to go. I guess every preacher thinks that. But... Uh, he decided to have a vote of confidence and uh, had the church to vote whether to keep him as the pastor or vote him out and he'll move on. Now, about close to 300 people there that day. He had 14 people out of 300 
to vote against him. The rest of them wanted him to stay. Everybody thought that was the end of it. And uh, I, I think 14 people against a preacher out of 300 is pretty good odds. It might be more than that here, but it's pretty good odds at that church. And uh, so he decided to stay. But the devil began to work on his mind. A preacher now working on the the devil working on his mind, he got those 14 people on his mind rather than all the rest on his mind. They got him down in the dumps and he resigned. Left the church and guess what? When he left, those 14 that voted against him left too. They didn't go where he went. Nobody knows where they went. And I thought how odd he could have stayed there and tried to win those 14 folks or just tell them to move on like they moved on. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, I don't care how long you've been saved, the devil will work on your mind. He'll get you depressed, he'll get you down in the dumps, and then he'll jump on you with both feet. You can trust the devil to work on your mind. Usually, he works the hardest when things aren't going good. Now, I mean, he'll just stir the pot and get you to thinking everything else. Amen. he work on your mind. On the Christian's mind. You may be saved, but he'll still work on your mind. But aren't you glad there's a power greater than the power of the devil that you can overcome him when he works on your mind. Look what the verse before this says. Casting all your care upon him, that's Jesus, for he careth for you. That's the answer when the devil attacks, but he will attack your mind. Secondly, you can trust the devil to destroy your soul. Devil don't care a thing about you. He don't care about your success. He don't care about your failures. He don't care when you're happy or when you're sad. He just don't care. He's after one thing, and that's to put your soul in a place called hell. That's going to be his future home. Who in the world would want to live in the place where the devil lives? I sure wouldn't, would you? Have to put up with him here now. I sure don't want to move in with him. I sure don't want to move him, move next door to him. No, sir. Hell and the lake of fire is the devil's final home. And he'll do everything he can to destroy your soul while you're alive on this earth. Don't let him do it. Amen. Third thing he'll do you can trust the devil to damage your testimony. Hear what I'm saying. You can damage your testimony in 10 minutes that you will not be able to get over in a lifetime. Amen. Everybody in this building is tempted. I mean, the devil will tempt you some way or the other. But we can overcome that temptation through the Lord Jesus Christ. But the devil, if he can't get you so, he'll try to damage your testimony. And there are multitudes of folks sitting in church pews across this country would give a million dollars if they hadn't done what they did and hadn't allowed the devil to position them in a certain place to where it damaged their testimony. I hear people say all the time, it don't make any difference what people think about me. Oh, you better be glad that you have a clean life and a good testimony. It does matter what folks think about you if you're a child of God. The Lord wants us to live clean and pure and holy and the devil don't want you to do that. He'll do everything he can to damage your testimony. As far as I'm concerned, 
When a Christian loses their testimony, they've, loose, they've lost their usefulness for the Lord Jesus. I can tell you over and over and over the number of cases where people allowed the devil to maneuver them into a place where they shouldn't have been and they failed the Lord. They may have made things right after that, but it damaged their testimony in such a way that hardly anybody has any confidence in them anymore. That's what the devil wants. Amen. He'll do everything he can to damage your testimony. Fourth, he'll do everything he can and you can trust him to disturb your church. Huh. The devil don't like Chesney Free Will Baptist Church. The devil don't like me. The devil don't like you being in here. The devil don't like the people that sing in the choir. The devil don't like the special singers. <coughs> and he'll, he'll do everything he can to disturb the church in such a way that folks don't talk to each other, folks don't fellowship with each other, folks dodge each other. You think I'm out of my mind? There are multitudes of churches like that this day and time. Amen. Where the devil has disturbed them. I heard, a, I heard of an instance where a church was going to vote, country church, was going to vote on putting some chandeliers in. You know, like these lights. <coughs> Most thought it was all right. But this one fella got up and he said, now, I've been a member since this church started. And I'm against chandeliers. He said, first of all, if you buy it, we don't have anybody knows how to play it. <laughs> now, I'm just telling you, the devil will use anything he can to disturb a church. Amen. Say amen. amen. He'll use anything he can to disturb the church. I don't like the color of the carpet. I don't like the preacher suit. Put up with it. It's a cheap one. Got it on sale. Then put it on the credit card. Got more of a discount off of it. They told me if I'd have bought two or three, I could almost got all of them free. It's 50% off sales tickle me. If you get 50% off one and you buy three, the third one ought to be free. But don't work that way, does it? And sometimes things don't work right in church. Well, I don't like this or I don't like that. Oh, listen, put yourself under a magnifying glass and let folks look at you. The devil will disturb the church if he can. <coughs> look, <coughs> look at verse 9. <coughs> In this chapter. Whom resist steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. I love this. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Then I like what he said. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. It tells me that the devil can be conquered and I want him conquered. Amen. In our life, in our mind, in our church, I want him conquered and I believe God's power can do it. Amen. He's already been whipped when Jesus went to Calvary. The victory was won there and victory is ours. Let's stand across the building.